So it's filled, it's running, it's cooling, it's working, AC recharge, new condenser, new receiver dryer. It has reached its maximum set point where the manufacturer does not let it get any colder. It is now cycling the condenser. So our, we're at 84 degrees and we're getting down to 30, 39.1 degrees. Let's see if we can focus, let's see if we can zoom in. So that's our minimum temperature. This is where the clutch, and you'll hear it in the background, cycling off and on, off and on, off and on. You can see where it's cycling off and on as the temperature out the dash goes up from 39 to 45, 39 to 45. This is how this vehicle is operating under these ambient conditions with um, our ambient condition of 76 degrees. And let's see what we got going here now. Our superheat and subcooling cannot be steady because we're constantly cycling. And if you're cycling, you cannot have a steady state. So you cannot take perfect readings. We need more of a load. So, oh, what happened here? Oh, what did I do? What did I do? Did I just erase everything like an idiot? I did something. Why am I, oh, I just timed out. Yeah, we timed out battery saving because it's been 15 minutes. So this I had set up for battery saving 15 minutes, it shuts off. So I just lost all my data for the last 15 minutes. But as you can see, our superheat and our subcooling right here, our pressures, get it back on. Oh, there it goes. So it cut off. There's out of, out of roughly 11 minutes, it cut off. That's before I turned on the laptop and got this data recording, but it was on a few minutes before. So now here we're coming in and you can see the clutch kicking out. And every time the clutch kicks out, so does the temperature out the dash. In and out, in and out, our temperature goes up, our temperature goes down. And let me get it out of telephotos so I don't make you dizzy. This is a dual air conditioning system. Now, I am taking the subcool, I'm taking the superheat from the wrong location because I'm taking the superheat after, see this T right here? This is from the rear evaporator. So I'm taking a combination of the front and rear right here because that is too small for me to fit this big wide sensor right here i need my needle nose sensor the little duck build sensor like one of these see this little duck build sensor see how narrow it is i could take the temperature of the evaporator coming out of the front evaporator right there with that like that but with this big guy i cannot fit it right there so let's look at just our suction line temperature so if we come back here our suction line temperature goes down to 40 5, 44, 43. Oh, you can't see it too good, can you? How about if I do that for you? There you go. Down to 43 and then it cycles out and goes back up. That is at this point right here. So now I'm gonna take it to the rear evaporator. Here's the rear evaporator. So now I'm gonna take it right here and I'm gonna move it on the rear. This comes from the rear, not from the front. So this is giving you your superheat off the rear evaporator. Now look at right here, 21, 22. There, the clutch just kicked out. I heard it. There it goes, and our pressures just pop back up. The low side's going up, the high side's going down. Now I just heard it click back on. So we're picking up the temperature of the rear suction line off the rear evaporator, but at this point, and the subcooling will be much less if I took that temperature clamp and I follow the line all the way back, comes down here, the rear line goes up over the axle, it comes back down, and then our evaporator is right here and the line comes down and if and it comes through here, if I clip that temperature sensor on the sub, maybe the superheat from right here is 10 degrees or 13 degrees. But because I'm picking up the heat from the exhaust on the metal line under here over here it's 21 degrees so your true superheat out your evaporator is measured from back there not from right here and that's why i tell you guys who live in really really hot climates to take the, all the lines down and insulate the suction line going all the way back if you live in some place like saudi arabia dubai south africa some of those hot places in south america and stuff like that you can really help it a lot now let's take a look at our sight glass what's our sight glass doing when it cycles on and off so let's zoom in here and let's listen to the clutch okay it just cycled off 
there's all the bubbles because the clutch is off it's going down now you down boom right there you can hear that clutch kick in and we went clear just because we're clear doesn't mean we're good you can have clear sight glass and be overcharged you can have a clear sight glass and be undercharged in some situations and it changes with ambient temperature and it changes with engine rpm and it changes it depends you see that's a fluid driven thermal fan clutch those are only good when they're new after about 30,000 miles they start drifting out of calibration and it greatly affects you know how the guys around the world go oh we we fill up by sight glass and or we live in a third world country where they don't give us a weight they tell us to fill up to a certain point get the bubbles and then put a hundred extra grams in that's only good if that thermal fan clutch is working like it was the day it came out of the factory brand new it's flowing the right amount of air over the condenser then that'll get you close to the ballpark but if that thermal fan clutch is out of drifted out of calibration and it's flowing a few hundred less cfm of air cubic meters per foot no, i'm using feet and meters together boy did i mess that up uh screw up and yeah okay so forget my alzheimer's moment right there so we lower the flow over the condenser we mess up the way the efficiency of the condenser can actually condense and get rid of these bubbles or make bubbles the way you see it because this fan doesn't work correctly if you told me you use that method by a sticker where you go until the bubbles are gone and then the sticker says put a, another 100 grams in there that would only be good with an oem condenser with a brand new oem fan then you would be in the ballpark and you'd be good but you put in an aftermarket condenser that changes the flow characteristics and changes the quantity amount and you have a fan that's several years old and might have 50,000 or 80,000 miles on it that is no longer a valid way of doing it this is why you use weight only and if you wait you'll be 100 percent right 100 percent at a time you never go wrong that way all right guys i'll see you later we'll get out of here and uh that's it i hope somebody learned something today on this don't forget true tech tools the field piece bluetooth the field piece vacuum pump the field piece four port manifold sm 480v and um this is the field piece kit for all the sensors that i use for taking the pressures and temperatures like you see in all my vehicles all this stuff is available at true tech tools including the big blue and the nylog and you can see exactly where i'm taking the temperature you don't take temperature like this you don't do this this is not temperature because this gets entrained air when the air shoots out of here there's air over here that's warmer being sucked in like this it's coming in from all 360 degree directions and if you tried to do this oops i just hit something if you tried to do this that is not the same as if you do this 12 inches down in the system all right, guys, I'll see you later.